Hi, my name is Ike and welcome to the Rolling Around Knitting channel. Today's video is just going to be a normal knitting podcast where I will talk about all of my finished objects, work, works in progress and and a work in progress I decided to abandon and a acquisition that I have. More details on these projects you can find either on my Instagram which will be linked down below or on my Ruffly page. I try to keep my Ruffly page as detailed as, as possible but uh, yeah some the thing I usually forget to add is like yarn amounts and stuff but uh, if you have any questions uh, about things that I will I am going to show you next then you can always just shoot me a message. The first finished object I want to talk about today is actually what I'm wearing right now. Um, it's the uh, Weekend Slipover V-neck by Petite Knit. And I knitted this in this um, yeah, sage green color. I will probably put in a, a clip of me uh, wearing it so you can see it a little bit better. But the yarns that I used are Hobby Portobello in um, the color 113, I think. Um, it's the like minty green color. They only have one that uh, looks like this. Uh, and the other yarn, um, so I held the Hobby Portobello together with Drops, um, their Kid Silk yarn. And uh, I used the color Mint, or Soft Mint it is called. Um, yeah, I actually knitted this pattern almost, I think, completely it's a pattern. I don't really remember if I changed anything about it. I. Uh, even followed the length of the um, yeah well <laughs> put in a, a video of me because it's better to show it that way but I also followed the length of the slip over in the pattern which I do think is a a little bit long maybe I would have liked it to be like the size of the ribbing um, yeah like that amount to be shorter but overall I'm actually really happy with this uh, and it was a project I didn't really yeah, made uh, plans for it but I didn't plan on using the uh, mohair held together with the Hobby Portobello I originally was going to use the Hobby Portobello just held double but I, um, yeah, I started the project and my hands were just hurting uh, because it was a, yeah, the yarn held together was too thick for the um, needles it's knitted on so I think I only took five minutes to decide and I just ordered the drops kit so straight away because I knew it would be a good or yeah almost perfect color match uh, and I really just wanted to get started on this project uh, this is actually the no it's the second slip over that I made but actually the first one I made for myself I made another one in like a, a bright blue color for my mom I don't know if I have a picture of that on my Instagram I don't think so um, but I that's the first slip over that I made and I actually never made another slip over um, and I really wanted to um, or no I did make another two more slipovers but they're knitted with cotton and I only wear them as like a summer top so it's not really something you put on top of other things um, yeah and as you can see this is quite oversized um, I let me look at my notes I made the size uh, small um, which isn't the, my recommended size for petite knit but my gauge was um, yeah my gauge was a little bit smaller so I instead of going up a needle size which I didn't have a bigger needle size um, I just chose to go up a size and it actually turned out perfect um, so if I make this again I will probably uh, make the same size I actually really want to make this slip over again uh, and 
I really like the version that Petite Knit has in her photos, the one with the, um, like it's almost dark grey black color and I really like that one. Um, but I also really like this yarn combination. Um, the Hobby Portobello, Portobello yarn is a uh, cotton, viscose, wool, something else blend uh, and held together with the mohair. But the fabric it creates, I'll uh, show you a picture where you can see it a little bit better, but it has a the Hobby Portobello yarn has a slight variation in the color and I really like how it looks with this slip over it so I might see if they have a, a dark grey or a black color um, yeah and hold that together with a mohair again I do find this uh, drops mohair um, yeah it's for me it's too uh, scratchy to wear uh, directly on my skin but as you can see I'm wearing uh, like a white t-shirt underneath uh, and it when my arms go against it it doesn't I can feel it but it doesn't irritate me that much um, not as much as it would if it touched my neck which it doesn't with a t-shirt underneath and this is also actually the way I like to style this one um, so it turned out perfect and the drops kit silk yarn isn't too expensive so it's a uh, yeah it was a nice project to make the next finished object that I have is one you have probably seen before if you watch some of my other videos which is the T number one by my favorite things knitwear I mostly knitted this one um, during my summer vacation um, and it's also actually knitted with yarn I got on vacation so uh, I used a little bit of a, a weird yarn combination um, the blue yarn is uh, either Holstkarn Coast or Retrosaria Coast because um, yeah, I was on vacation in Portugal and I bought the uh, Retrosaria Coast yarn there in the store but I didn't really know what to make with it uh, so when I came home and I figured um, I could use it together with the Isayar Bamulin that I also got in Portugal which is the like neutral colored yarn uh, but I didn't have enough of the Retrosaria Coast and the shipping from the uh, Retrosaria Rosa Pomar yarn store is quite expensive to ship it to me here in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, so I looked in my stash because I knew I had a yarn that looked really similar to the Retrosaria Coast, which is the Holstkarn Coast yarn. Uh, and they are actually the same uh, meterage, the same yarn composition, and the color was also almost the same there was a little bit there was a slight difference in the yarn color but now that it's mauled together with the um, the Isair Bamulin I actually can't see where I used the Holstkarn Coast and where I used the Retrosaria Coast I knitted this the um, let me see in my notes I knitted the uh, size extra small, but I knitted it on a bigger needle size than suggested in the pattern, which uh, I knitted it on four millimeter needles, and I think the pattern suggests three and a half millimeter needles. Um, yeah, just because the I found the fabric a little bit nicer knitted with the four millimeter needles compared to the fabric. Uh, that knitted up with the three and a half millimeter needles so i just used the four and made the smallest size which it turned out quite oversized and i i do really like it i finished it a few weeks ago and actually have worn it a few times already but um yeah i think if i make this again i will i, I really want to make this again um but I will use a different yarn combination. Maybe the, um, yeah, I saw someone use the Holstkarn Coast together with the Holstkarn uh, Titicaca, which is a 100% alpaca yarn. 
and I would really like to try that combination for this t-shirt uh, and then also knit the size extra small but on the three and a half millimeter needle so I will get a little bit of a uh, yeah not tighter fit but not as oversized as this one um, yeah but overall I actually really like this uh, construction with the um, I think it's called a saddle shoulder I don't know if you can see it that well there you go um, I really like this construction and the way the neckline is done is also a new method for me uh, as well as the saddle shoulder construction um, but I really liked how it turned out Oh, one thing I did want to say that I did not follow the instructions in the pattern for the um, I don't know, you can't really see it that well with this yarn but for the double folded edges I did not follow the instructions in the pattern um, which caused it to, I don't know if you can see it that well but it, it flares out a little bit um, at the edge and it also does the same thing at the bottom but I I don't think it's that noticeable and not really worth redoing all of the double folded edges with which actually took quite a lo long time to um, yeah sew all of the edges down by hand but I do really like the finish that it gives so it was totally worth it the next finished object that I have is a uh, yeah, Christmas gift from my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm actually already finished with these and I um, yeah, I wanted to start early on Christmas gifts um, because I always decide last minute I want to make uh, one more thing for someone else uh, and I don't really have time for it. Uh, and I didn't, I really don't want to be stressed this year about gift knits so I start, I thought I already know what my boyfriend wants as a knitted Christmas gift, uh, so why not make it when I have the time for it? Um, so yeah, I made these Sunday socks for him. These are the Sunday socks by Petite Knit and it's a like 2x2 two two ripped sock knitted with um, DK2 worsted weight yarn. I think on four millimeter needles. Um, the suggested yarn is a what is it called? There's a a, a sock yarn suggested, and also I think the um, Fukulana Peruvian Highland wool, uh, which is technically not a, sh a sock yarn, but I know he will only wear these around the house and not really uh, in shoes or something. So I was okay with using a non-sock uh, yarn yarn for this project. So the yarn I used is the Fukulana Peruvian Highland Bow in the color Christmas Red, which is this really nice, um, yeah, a little bit darker red color. Um, these actually almost exactly match the sweater that I made for him two years ago, I think. Maybe no, maybe it was last year, but I don't. I really don't remember. Um, I knitted a anchor sweater for him, uh, also in this like darker red color, but not in this yarn. Um, and he asked for socks that would match to his sweater, uh, so I used this uh, Christmas red color, which I think will almost match the sweater perfectly. Um, yeah, notes or thoughts on the pattern. The Petite Knit says, uh, even on the referee info page, but also in her pattern, that for the two biggest sizes, if you um, want to use like uh, one ball of the yarn per sock, then you should knit the leg about five centimeters shorter and you will get um, one sock out of one ball. So you only need two balls for a pair of socks. But I actually made this leg about 11 centimeters shorter and I still came up like really short with yarn for the foot. I actually think took out 
one no two or three centimeters from the suggested length in the pattern um, for the foot length so I knitted 11 centimeters shorter instead of five and I also took out some uh, a few centimeter in the foot compared to the suggested length in the pattern and I think I only had about this this big of uh, yeah this big of a, a strand of yarn left uh, from either ball so I really couldn't couldn't have made the leg of the uh, sock as tall as the pattern suggested because then I wouldn't even have come across halfway um, yeah I wouldn't even have could have done half of the foot of the sock so I really don't know yeah I found it a bit weird that the yarn suggestions suggestions were so um, off but it might also might also have something to do maybe with my tension. I actually didn't measure my gauge for this one, so I probably should do that first before telling you that the uh, yarn estimates are wrong. But I, um, yeah, I, ju I just wanted to let you know that I couldn't get um, the, yeah, if I knitted the sock to the pattern, the length that the pattern says, I couldn't have done it out of two balls of the, uh, Filcolana Peruvian Highland wool but either way uh, my boyfriend tried them on and they still fit I actually I knitted the biggest size that's in the pattern for him because he's a uh, EU size uh, 45 but um, like for the circumference of the leg and the foot I maybe could have made him a uh, smaller size I think the smaller size is like a EU 43 to 44 maybe or 42 to 43 um, but yeah for the circumference of the foot I actually could have uh, knitted him the smaller size which still would have fit and then maybe I could have made the, the foot a little bit longer uh, and also the leg a little bit taller um, but yeah maybe in the f future if I knit him some other socks I will uh, try out that I knitted some uh, more socks, but uh, compared to the big uh, EU45 size socks that I made for my boyfriend, these socks are actually really tiny. <laughs> I find these so cute to look at. Um, I probably have showed this yarn in my previous podcast episode, but it's the um, uh, Superwash. Uh, sock yarn from Freckles and Speckles and I got this yarn at the um, yeah, Wally Hood yarn store uh, it's a actually an online yarn store in Utrecht but they have like a few times a year they have an open day where you can come to their studio uh, and they have like a, a normal looking yarn store uh, and you can go and see the yarn in person uh, and buy the yarn there so I a few weeks ago I went there um, and actually bought the Peruvian Highland Bowl uh, also there and also uh, yeah a mini skein of this neon pink sock yarn I actually don't know what the color is called because there wasn't any name on the um, mini skein but if you go on the Wally Hood website and go to the Freckles and Speckles yarn there is actually only one neon uh, pink neon colored sock yarn so it's that one I know the mini skein is the same yarn as the uh, bigger skeins that they offer on the website so that's really nice the pattern that I used for these socks <laughs> they're just so tiny um, they're actually really stretchy uh, and that's also why they are called the stretchy baby socks by let me look at my notes um, they're called the stretchy baby socks by Fabienne Schulte I don't know if that's how you pronounce her last name but I will link all of the patterns down below um, yeah I knitted the a uh, smaller size that's written in the pattern which is the zero to three months size um, and I knitted the pattern completely to the uh, yeah, lengths suggested in the pattern um, 
I did find it a little bit confusing. This, as you can see, the it's done with a. Um, I think it's called a wrap and turn heel, or maybe a shadow wrap heel. I don't know exactly. Um, I actually never done any other heel on a sock than just a heel flap and gusset. Uh, not even a German short wear heel, which I'm actually really excited to try out someday. But as you can see, I made probably made a few mistakes because the oh, yeah this side looks bad. You can see there are some holes here that this side looks a lot better, a lot neater. Um, but I found the pattern a little bit confusing um, for how to measure the uh, foot length. But because it's said to measure, uh, I think from the heel or something, or I don't know, the wording um, was a little bit confusing to me because I couldn't figure out if I needed to uh, measure it like with the length of the heel or without it. Um, so I just knit it until I thought it looked right and this is how they turned out. I actually don't have, I don't know <laughs> any babies uh, that I could give these to. So they will just, um, yeah, they, uh, I will just keep them for when someday one of my friends or maybe me will get a baby um, and I can give these really cute socks to them. But uh, yeah, until the time they just lay inside my closet and I look at them from time to time <laughs> to smile about how cute these are. The last finished object, or actually two finished objects that I have, um, is the Espresso Pouch by Alla Knitwear. This uh, actually made a bigger one and also a smaller one. Excuse the, <laughs> the sound of money. I actually use this as my wallet. Um, and yeah, you can hear the coins inside. Um, but yeah, I made two versions. This one is the smallest size uh, written in the pattern. And I think this one is the uh, second size. She has um, yep, uh, pattern instructions for three sizes. So um, yeah, a small one, a medium one, and also a bigger one. Um, she also has instructions on how to put in the zipper, which is really nice. And it has this like, um, yeah, loop where you can hold it from. I find it really handy to just grab it like this out of my bag. Um, but yeah. The yarn that I used for the espresso pouch is um, some Retrosaria Coast um, or Holstgarn Coast. <laughs> I actually, I had a, uh, some yarn left over from the uh, T number one that I made, um, but I uh, yeah, wound it by hand into a ball and I didn't keep the uh, yarn label. So I actually don't know if this is the Holstgarn coast or the Retrosaria coast because the yarns looked so similar um, but in the end it doesn't really matter because the yardages were the same. For the smaller size uh, of the pouch I used only 10 grams of the Holstgarn coast held double uh, and for the medium size I used a little bit more than 20 grams um, but it, yeah, maybe if, it, if I did one round shorter, I would have used uh, the recommended 20 grams in the, yeah, the yarn estimate in the pattern is uh, 20 grams. And I would have used that if I knitted it maybe like one round shorter. But this pattern is actually great if you like have some leftover yarn in your stash, um, which is just like a random half skein or maybe even, uh, yeah. 10 grams it's perfect because it doesn't take up a lot of yarn and it's actually a very uh yeah very useful project i use this one as i said as a like a tiny wallet in my purse for um some cash 
uh, and this bigger one currently stores some uh, swatches of things that I uh, might want to work on in the future um, and I actually also thought the bigger size this one um, I don't know if I yeah I like to read uh, and I often bring my book with me to my boyfriend's house or to my parents house if I'm staying there for the night and I'll find if I put my book just by itself in my bag the corners get all ugly and the paper gets scratched and I think if you make the biggest size of the espresso pouch if you have just like a soft cover pocket book which is usually the type of books that I get if I yeah if I buy them myself if I get them from the library they always have hardcover books uh, but usually the ones that I buy myself are the smaller soft cover books just because a soft cover costs less than a hardcover and I'm still a student um, but yeah I think the biggest size of the espresso pouch will perfectly fit one of these uh, soft cover pocket books in them so I might see if I have some leftover yarn in my stash that I can make the uh, biggest espresso pouch from uh, just to uh, have as like a, a cover to keep my books nice so now on to works in progress I uh, yeah work in progress that I talked about in the last video the uh, seashell skirt I haven't worked on it um, since I filmed that last video probably uh, and I'm also making a project vlog about that project uh, so I won't be showing that one in this podcast video just because I don't really have anything to say about it because I didn't work on it um, but yeah I do have some other works in progress that I want to talk about and the first one is actually also a test knit by Alla Knitwear and for this test knit the uh, yeah, the yarn used for the project was gifted by Isir and it's this lovely, uh, ooh, it's really, it was folded up in the back so it's a little bit crumpled. But the uh, sweater that I'm test knitting is the Sand Sweater by Ellen Knitwear and as I said the yarn was gifted by Isir uh, and it's the Aaron Tweed in the color Confetti. I was actually really excited to finally get a chance to test it for Alla Network. Um, I yeah, I got accepted for the test knit for the espresso pouch first and only a few days later I also got accepted for the test knit for the sweater. I have been following her for some time on Instagram and I really like yeah, her style of uh, designs and also the uh, also for this it's a relatively like simple sweater I don't really want to say uh, simple because it always yeah it has like a, a bad sound to it um, but it's designed to be more of a um, yeah simple it's it's not it's so bad uh, it feels so bad to say simple because it's a really beautiful design and the details are really thought through but um, yeah, it's simple in the way that it, it doesn't have any ribbing or any um, yeah uh, it doesn't have any texture or any color work so it's a relatively um, yeah like neutral uh, casual design and you can really um, yeah pair it with anything but I was really excited to uh, test it for uh, Maria from Alle Network because I really like her designs um, and I think a design like this really makes the yarn uh, that's suge suggested for the pattern stand out. As you can see the yarn that I used it's a little bit of a um, warmer grey colour with all of these coloured specks in it. Therefore uh, the colour is called confetti because it's, it looks like uh, yeah, someone put confetti through your yarn. But uh, I'm currently, I'm actually done with the body of the sweater. Uh, and I also did the color. I made the color a little bit taller than suggested in the pattern. Um, I think, 
yeah, she... Uh, I don't want to say how many rounds it was because I don't want to spoil the pattern. But the length that she suggested in the pattern, I knitted twice that length and then uh, folded the color double and knitted it down. Um, I She gives options for the um, yeah bottom hem to be cinched a little bit cinched in or not. And actually chose to uh, not do any decreases to cinch in the bottom. But now that it's finished, it's quite an oversized sweater. Um, and I actually think it will look better on me uh, if the bottom edge is a little bit cinched in. So we'll probably, once I finish the sleeves and try on the sweater again, to see maybe if I uh, like it with the without the decreases, uh, I will keep it that way. But if I, uh, yeah, if I want it the other way, then I will just um, redo my bottom hem and uh, yeah, make it a little bit more cinched in. So far I am about halfway through the sleeve uh, and I still have the other sleeve to go. This actually knitted up really fast <laughs> because I, it's quite a big sweater or quite an oversized sweater. Um, I'm making the second size and it, I think this one gives me about um, maybe 25 to 30 centimeters of positive ease but don't take my word for it because um, yeah you'll have to look at the pattern once Maria releases some more information about it how much positive ease it actually has uh, but it's quite a big sweater and I actually only started knitting on this It's now Monday and I started on it not last Friday, but the Friday before so uh, about a week and three days and I Think I can finish the sweater this week <laughs> if I'm honest it um, Yeah, it knits up really fast and uh, it also I'm really excited to see what the finished object looks like so I keep wanting to work on it more and more uh, and that makes it also go by a lot faster. Another uh, work in progress or actually a half finished object uh, that I have are the Ole Mittens by Paula Strikt um, which I have done one middle. <laughs> Let me show you. Uh, I still have to weave in my ends, so ignore those. But I have finished, um, yeah, one one mitten of the pair, and I am still working on the other one. So the Ole mittens are a, I think, half fisherman's rib um, mitten, and you knit it from the bottom up, um, and it's supposed to, um, yeah, you're supposed to fold the cuff so it has a uh, a cuff on the middle and it has these really nice increases for your thumb uh, and also some really nice decreases on the top of the middle. Uh, I started knitting on these because I had some yarn left over from other projects and yeah the past few weeks I have been or the past few months I have been buying some more yarn than usual um, and I really want to get my stash down a little bit more. Right now, uh, yeah, without the projects that I'm working on, it almost all fits into a one relatively yeah, medium sized uh, box, but I really want uh, to get to the point where I only have a one or two uh, projects for or wanting to um, yeah, yarns in stash for a future project and then just the yarn for the projects that I'm working on right now and not a lot of like leftover balls of yarn or uh, sweater quantities worth of yarn for a project that I know I won't be making until a few months but um, yeah so I wanted to use uh, I wanted to work on a project that used some stash yarn and the yarns that I uh, hats are the uh, Holscarn Coast again, but this one in the uh, porcelain color and some of the drops brushed up like a silk in 
a light blue color. I actually don't know what this color is called, but I think if you, uh, it might be linked on my roughly page or otherwise it's like the medium blue color that they have from the brushed up like a silk. Um, but yeah, I actually don't really have anything else to say about these mittens, just that I really like how they look. Uh, they almost match the color of a hat that I have, that is store-bought, but um, yeah, I think these uh, mittens will be really nice to uh, wear together, together with that hat. Another work in progress that I have is one that I actually started months ago uh, and I haven't been I think I haven't worked on it in like three or four months um, but yeah a, a few days ago I uh, saw this project again in my closet and I just felt like working on it so I thought I, I'd show you in this podcast to yeah show a little bit of the progress that I have made. It's the um, Marie Pillow by Petite Knit which is this uh, slip stitch garter pattern um, pillow yeah you actually only need the front of the pillow uh, and then she has um, instructions on how to make a uh, back for the pillow like a fabric back and she also sells them on her website i think but um, i've looked on some other uh, like um, fabric or craft websites and they uh, usually have uh, pillow backings already pre-made so i might buy one of those or I might make one myself but um, I first have to finish this pillow which will take quite a few more hours um, as you can see I have a lot of ends on this side like it's so much ends um, I'm using about 10 or 11 different colors um, it's a bit hard to show uh, the color repeat is from this um, let me see this bright blue color until here so I think from the bright blue until the white and then bright blue with all of these colors again um, I think how many colors is that one two three four five six seven eight nine oh I'm actually only using nine different colors and I'm uh, using yeah, those are all of my scrap yarns. Sorry for the wrinkling. They're all in this bag. Um, and I'm striping it with uh, this yarn as the main yarn. Which is some uh, hand dyed yarn from We Made Wardrobe that I won in a giveaway last year, I think. It was quite a while ago. I had this yarn in stash uh, for quite a while until I um, finally decided on a project for it and then I've been working on this project for months now so um, yeah it was quite a long time ago but it's this really nice a little bit greenish grayish blue uh, color and it has some color variation in it like some parts are a little bit more blue some parts are a little bit more green and there are also some almost white or light blue specks um, yeah for the all of the ends that I said I'm planning on just um, sewing on the pillow backing and just folding these to the insides um, I thought it was the best way to uh, manage all of the different colors because I don't really want to carry them up the side of the pillow because this side would get very uh, thick maybe um, and I am also not really in the mood to weave in all of these ends and I think if I just um, yeah so the pillow backing on all of these ends will just get folded to the inside and it will be okay but we'll see once I get a little bit uh, farther on this project I think um, yeah, I worked on it a few days ago and I think I did about uh, three of the different color stripes which actually I think 
doing only one of the colors uh, takes me maybe more than half an hour or maybe almost an hour. I don't know how long I worked on this. But it's quite a uh, labor intensive project. Also because it's knitted on uh, 3 millimeter needles and all of these yarns are either uh, DK weight or uh, fingering weight held double. So it's quite a um, dense fabric which can sometimes make my hands hurt a little bit if I work on it too long. And that's also actually why I decided to put the, down this project for a while and only started working on it again uh, last week. Just because yeah, it makes my wrists and like the um, outside of my hand hurt a little bit if I work on it for too long. So I don't work on it too much because I really don't want to hurt my hands. Quite a few things to talk about this episode. Uh, before I uh, sat down to film this um, video I thought well I, I have a few finished objects but I haven't worked on that much things since my um, yeah since my last video which was just uh, yeah right after my vacation but actually I have finished a lot more things than I thought I did but um, something I did not finish and I I yeah, I won't take it out of the bag because I, I'm, I didn't. Well, I made some progress on it. <laughs> I'm being really cryptic, but uh, let me just show you. I don't know if anyone can recognize what this is, um, and I'm just going to keep it in the bag because I don't really want to look at it. At it, but it's my um, Elizabeth blouse by Petite Knit. And I have decided I'm going to be frogging this project just because the, the yarn really wasn't working for me. I talked about it a few times in my last episode that the yarn was giving me some really weird tension issues and uh, the color was a little bit too floppy and the yarn just wasn't right for this project I finally decided. Um, so I will be ripping out the yarn to probably use for another project but in the meantime I don't have anything planned for this yarn so um, yeah for the meantime it will just stay in the project form unfinished uh, and with a few loop skeins as you can see uh, and once I decide on what to do with the yarn I will actually frog the projects but for right now it will just stay in the way that it is. Those were actually all of the projects that I um, yeah finished objects that I have and works in progress that I have. I do have an acquisition uh, so if you want to stay around for that then uh, yeah now is the time or otherwise I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. But for those of you who do like acquisitions, I, um, yeah, surprise, I bought some new yarn. <laughs> the yarn that I bought is the Trops Daisy. Which is actually a new yarn that Trops brought out uh, a few weeks ago. It's a DK weight, uh, non-superwash wool, a uh, non-superwash Marina wool. The label is a little bit crumpled because it was, uh, yeah, the yarn of the store that I buy uh, most of my drops yarn from. They always send my the they always send my yarn in like a vacuum sealed uh, package so that it can go through the. Oh, what's that word called? Um, the it's prefabus in Dutch, but the thing where you put your like your um, your mail and stuff, it goes through your door. Uh, English is so hard sometimes. Um, but yeah, I got two colors. Uh, this one is a light blue color. It's uh, color ten, uh, and this one is the the dark gray color that I have. Or the medium grey, I'm not sure. But this one is color 5. 
uh, and I was really excited to try out this yarn because drops um, they have a, a few uh, DK weight um, yarn options that are really great but they actually don't have a non superwash uh, yarn option which um, yeah I used to use a lot of superwash wool but for the past few months I've been using some more uh, non superwash wool and I actually really like how it knits up and how it wears so I was really excited to try out the non superwash wool that they have and this yarn is actually so soft I was um, expecting a little bit more rustic yarn because that's um, sometimes what you get with non superwash wools. I find the superwash wools are really silky soft. Um, and a non superwash wool that I have tried was a little bit more scratchy. So I was ex actually expecting that, but this yarn is really soft. Um, I bought these two together, these two colors, uh, to work together in a project. I bought four of these and uh, four of these to make a stripey scarf for the winter because the um, I'm holding this upside down <laughs> the dark gray uh, color actually perfectly matches one of my uh, long winter coats and the light blue color actually matches one of my uh, shorter like um, fall coats so I'm really excited to stripe these two together so I can uh, wear them with the uh, darker grey winter coat but I can also wear them with the light blue um, fall jacket that I have. Um, and yeah, that's my plan for these two yarns. I'm actually really curious if any of you have already tried out this yarn and what you think of it. Uh, I, have seen, I have seen a few people on Instagram comment about wanting to try out this yarn but I haven't seen a lot of people actually make a project with it so if you have tried this yarn or you want to try this yarn let me know so that was it for today's podcast episode I hope you enjoyed uh, talking I hope you enjoyed listening to me rambling on about all of my knitting projects if you like this video I will hopefully see you again in the next one and in the meantime, I want to wish you happy knitting and a happy week or weekend whenever you're watching this. Doei!